Facebook is facing mounting criticism after it blocked news content in Australia amid a dispute with the government over a planned law which will force tech giants to pay for news content on their platforms. Facebook has responded, saying the legislation fundamentally misunderstands its relationship with publishers. But politicians, publishers and rights groups in several countries have accused it of bullying and have raised concerns over access to information. Well, in the Australian Parliament, the Health Minister, Greg Hunt, expressed his anger at Facebook's move. This is outrageous and unacceptable. We expect that Facebook will fix these actions immediately and never repeat them again. This is an assault on a sovereign nation. It is an assault on people's freedom and in particular it is an utter abuse of big technologies, market power and control over technology. This will go around the world but this stops. This is unacceptable. I, I will say this, apparently their original mission was to bring the world closer together and to allow people to help share and express what matters to them. Well, that seems to have been replaced by profit over people. We say to Facebook, stop this now, and perhaps it's time to put people over profit. Let's cross to Sydney and speak to our correspondent, Phil Mercer. Phil, how did this dispute arise? Well, this is a fight that has been brewing for quite a long time, ever since this media bargaining code was first suggested by Australia's centre-right government. Now, for many years, traditional broadcasters and publishers have complained that as their advertising revenues have collapsed, social media platforms and search engines have benefited from their quality journalism without paying for it. So this new law in Australia's view, would level the playing field. Now we've seen two very different approaches. Google has this week signed multi-million pound deals with several major Australian media companies. Facebook, on the other hand, has decided to take on the Australian government. And as we heard there from the Federal Health Minister, Greg Hunt, in federal parliament, there is, uh, in public at least, fury at Facebook's move to bar Australian users from sharing or viewing news stories, not just from local news uh, organisations, but from global websites as well. So this is a fight that has been uh, uh, brewing for, for quite a long time, and this week it's come to an almighty head. So we know that the, the Australian government is opposed to what Facebook is doing, but more widely, is there a sense that Australian society is very critical of Facebook? I think uh, this could well be a public uh, relations uh, own goal, or if not uh, that, a disaster for Facebook. Uh, who knows the, the thinking behind uh, this strategy to take on the Australian government, to poke an elected government with this sort of digital stick. And you have to remember that uh, the Prime Minister of Australia, Scott Morrison, has been very loud in his condemnation, saying that uh, Australia won't be intimidated and won't back down. This new law passed its first legislative hurdle on, uh, well, early Thursday local time when it passed the lower house of Australia's federal parliament. We expect it to be given final approval by the upper chamber next week. So in terms of legislation, it seems almost certain to happen. Australia says that there's still time for Facebook to negotiate, but we get the sense that neither side is willing to back down. In the meantime, many Australians Australians uh, who have been used to getting their news curated on Facebook are now having to look elsewhere. And uh, if this goes on for much longer, or certainly into the short to medium term, perhaps Australians will be used to living without Facebook, and that could damage its model. But we do get the sense that uh, other co countries such as Canada and organisations like the European Union are watching very closely the progress of Australia's media regulation law to see how it goes and it could well be that Facebook is taking on Australia as a way of warning other countries around the world not to do the same.
OK, Finn, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Phil, thank you very much indeed for that. Well, I'm joined now by Finn Witcherly, who's a social media and digital marketing expert, and also by uh, Mark Damazer, who's former controller of uh, BBC Radio 4. Well, Finn, I mean, the World Wide Web was founded on an open philosophy where you can freely link to stories on other websites without having to pay a fee. Why should that be any different in the world of Facebook? Well, exactly. I mean, uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who founded the WWW, said that, you know, enforcing some kind of payment or shakedown from uh, national uh, organizations like newspaper organizations or media organizations uh, is going to make the Internet unworkable. So the, the ACC code that they have tried to establish is basically saying that newspapers and media organizations should have preferential treatment when it comes to the news feed as opposed to any other organizations or people using Facebook. I suppose, Mark, that news organizations would say that the difference with the World Wide Web here is that Facebook is itself making profits by selling advertising around those links. Yes, and that's the root of it. Um, I think Finn's point... Uh, is a good one, uh, though not a completely winning one, which is where would you draw the line? Why should it be newspapers and not providers of other community services which get the preferential treatment? We might come back to that. But the root of this is that Facebook has pulverised the advertising market and the advertising revenues of newspapers, and in particular, as it happens, local newspapers, in a way that has made it very difficult for them to invest in content and good journalism. And there was a moment, just a moment, where individual newspaper websites were beginning to make headway because they could sell their own advertising on their own pages. But that all got sucked up in the vast more that belongs to Facebook. And so for several years now, the newspaper industry, and not only in Australia, but obviously around the world, has been thinking, uh, well, Facebook have destroyed our business model. Uh, they get reputation advantage out of our content, although it's only a small amount of what Facebook does. It gives a degree of respectability and legitimacy to everything else that Facebook does, and so it's time for Facebook to pay. Uh, Finn, do you agree with that, that Facebook is, in a sense, killing news? Um, I think uh, when any new organisation that comes in that has access to more oxygen of attention, then they have a legitimate right to be able to own that. So previously, the traditional media had the monopoly on attention and they would charge companies to be able to access the attention that they were able to mobilise. Now Facebook is able to mobilise a lot more attention than traditional media and therefore they get a bigger chunk of the advertising revenue. But in terms of traditional media, for example, like the likes of the Times and the Sunday Times, you know, they, they don't have any requirements to put their information up there on Facebook. You know, they've got their information on the website and then all of the people who are fans of their uh, publication can go and view that information on the website. But the reality is, as most uh, business owners will tell you, is if you just publish, people will not come. You actually have to have good marketing strategies and digital strategies to get people actually to come to that website to view whatever content or products and services you're offering. So in the, t in the case of the Times and the Sunday Times, they're investing 1,100 Facebook ads at the moment just targeted at the UK in order to get people onto their website. So they're actually uh, benefiting from using Facebook to drive circulation to their website. It's interesting, Mark, that, that there is a division here. Some newspapers, as Finn says, like the Times and the Financial Times, they've had some success by, uh, you know, keeping their articles behind paywalls. Other news organisations, particularly local newspapers, if you think in Scotland, uh, uh, the, the Scotsman, Scotland Sunday, for example, they long had a policy of offering all their content for free and perhaps that hasn't has wor worked as well for them. Isn't it just about uh, companies actually just coming up with a, a decent business business model? It is, but it's very, very difficult. Um, I mean, Facebook's pipes, or what you might call Facebook's power of distribution of content, is so great <coughs> that if you're not on Facebook for a tremendous number of journals around the world, and don't think just national newspapers, think local too, where the damage has been the greatest, then your chances of finding your audience with your quality content is much diminished. Now, what Facebook have said for many years, and they're beginning to concede that this is no longer the case, but what they've said for many years is, uh, well, look, we're just a platform. We just provide the pipes. And aren't you lucky, you newspapers, that you can use our pipes to get to your audience? 
And it's an alluring argument, but of course it's not entirely true because Facebook clearly makes editorial decisions in the context of what it decides to promote by its algorithms, the things that decide what goes onto your feed and with what prominence. And newspaper publishers are at the beck and call and have to jump to the tune of Facebook when it changes its algorithm. And give you an example, very recently Facebook decided that they would prioritize video content in news feeds. Now you might think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. It's a visual world. They know that their customers like video content. And then suddenly newspapers have to start investing hand over fist, and many of them can't afford to do it, in video content in order to show that they can get prominence on Facebook. Now, none of this is necessarily malign at first instance by Facebook, but it has a devastating effect on many people who are striving to produce content in a world where Facebook is awash with misinformation and bad content. They're trying to do something about it, but they're full of it. So when the people who are providing legitimate journalism, old-fashioned phrase, but checked sources, fact-based, evidence-based, say, no, look, they need to pay for it, because otherwise we simply can't produce the content that we think is in the public interest, you can see why they think they've got a case. Finn, who needs who more in this power relationship? The fact that Facebook walked away and stopped linking to news stories in Australia, does that suggest that, well, they can afford to do that? Well, exactly. I mean, for, as far as Facebook revenue is concerned, uh, news only constitutes 4% of, of what their income is. So it's easily something that they can walk away from. In fact, these organizations were literally set up just over 10 years ago in the back of a garage. And now they're expected to moderate on issues like democracy and dying industries such as traditional media and their advertising problems. So, um, yeah, Facebook can easily walk away from this and let the traditional m newspapers and media organizations thug it out for themselves. <laughs> Okay. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, I think it is only 4%, but I think if all news feeds disappeared off Facebook all over the planet, I think Facebook would be enormously damaged, far more than 4% damaged. Their reputation would take a huge hit, uh, and I think actually usage also would significantly decline, so each side needs each other. Okay, Finn Witcherly and Mark Damaser, thank you both very much indeed.